West, outside, in tubs, riparian planting zone 8B, I believe, is where we are. So, one really good thing that you guys can do if you want to know about where you live and the types of fish you can keep and plants you can grow outside is to look up the gardener's manual um it, it's in the farmer's almanac it's in um noah uses it like the the uh, national oceanographic air and space or something i don't know <laughs> whatever it is the weather place um they uh they use it as well and it'll tell you your very specific weather uh, climate, I guess, more so than weather. Weather's short-term, climate's long-term. Uh, what the highs and lows are, when the first and last frost are, and what the highs of summer are, and things like that. But a lot of times you can then use that because you may not expect it to play out the way it does. So, for instance, where I'm at, I can go... 40 miles west or east of here i should say and i will be in zone six i'm in zone 8b which is kind of like a mediterranean like a little cooler than mediterranean zone for planting flowers and so forth honey do you want to be on the stream today I'm busy. <laughs> okay and um am i coming in clear okay everybody i i want to make sure i that the picture is clear and sounds good also um, so let's say hello to a couple people while we do a sound check. Donnie, good to see you. Sally Ball's brother, good to see you. Uh, Erna Pitchery, good to see you. Uh, Jesse, what's up? It's me, uh, your average fish keeper. Hey, buddy, good to see you. And, uh, oh, I got some uh, speak of the devils. Got some new fish, translucent guppies were dropped off by a viewer and i'm so thankful uh because i want to do an episode soon talking about why fish have translucent skin organs textures scales all the above and um how that evolves as a trait versus how it can be adapted into a line for looks so that's a whole other tangent but today we are talking about tubbin we be tubbin I guess I can't really sing most of that song because uh, it's just inappropriate for a white dude. Okay, so Natural Aquarist, what's up? Regina Phalanges, T-Bone, how's it going, buddy? Uh, Laura, good to see you. Laura, I should say. Uh, Matt Thibodeau, what's going on? 40 Years Fish, what's up? And uh, yes, No Raccoons got the package, Average Fish Keeper. Thank you so much for... Those and the um, the baby orange madakas too. I'm really excited. We're gonna take a look at those. Mary Page, hi, how, oh, hey, wow, 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 wow. hello, good to see you, and uh, I'm glad you're here. Greg the Guppies here, Aquaballs, George, uh, Christine Richardson, hello. Uh, everyone got to 91 degrees in your tub, 85. Ooh, that is uh, that is a hot tub. That's a hot tub. You've got a hot tub of fish. Um, let's see here. Noah, welcome. Uh, and Jeremiah Tudor, hello, welcome. Uh, so, we are thinking about tubs. And let me switch this to Wi-Fi for... All right. So, the... When you're starting a tub, let me know if there's any issues with uh, reception. But let's just go over the very basics because a few people have been messaging me and asking what is going on with tubs. Like how do I take care of them? What do I do to start a tub? And really the answer is there's no wrong way, especially with tubs outside um the, the the wrong way is if you put it out way too early and they freeze that would be bad here you can see some madakas these are my creamsicle group and my red caps and then over here we've got the sparkling blue miyuki which aren't super bright blue they're more of like a grayish silver blue whereas the ones i've moved back inside um because i want to keep a closer eye on their eggs they're in they're indoors and then over here we've got our wild 
the one in the picture and this is a kitty litter scooper that I have right here but right now what we're dealing with in here is we've got wild red uh, red cheeked minnows top minnows uh, and they're a real interesting fish because they're from down in the Florida area, so they do need a little more heat than than Seattle provides for them most of the year. But I also just wanted to show that I put some plants in here, some red root floaters, things like that. Um, and then I put a little bit of crushed up uh, lava rock down at the very bottom of, of these uh, particular containers. But there's not really, like this is what I wanted to get to, is people ask me all the time, you know, what filter do I need? What type of substrate should I do? And the great thing about tubs is ideally you don't really need any one specific type of anything. I've done these all a little different just to kind of test them throughout the year. But basically, this one here has nothing at the bottom. It is a Rubbermaid container, and you can see the water's green. So it's been getting UV light, and uh, that is has caused it to grow green water. And green water is awesome for growing baby fish in particular. They will eat it. It's algae. Um, and so it's, it's good, good stuff. Don't worry about it. A lot of people see the green water, and then they want to dose with chemicals. But no, fish love that, especially little fish in the summer. Um, they love that. So what you want to do is get yourself a container. Ideally, I will be drilling some holes in these containers. So I'll drill a hole like here and maybe here just so that if, if it and then probably put a little bit of filter floss in it. And then that way there's no chance that if it rains really hard, uh, it won't overflow. But the main thing you want to consider um, is how cold can your fish go so for me i've got some fish out here like the rice fish that can be out here all year in fact if you guys were seeing my live streams back in um say march you would know that i actually had them out here in march and they were doing just fine they uh f the water froze and they were under the water and they were doing just fine i'm just trying to catch one of these little minnows they're they're hard to see in here these ones are dark and so it's kind of this weird surprise when you're keeping a lot of native fish like if you have pygmy sunfish or golden top minnows golden top minnows show up a little bit better but it's kind of a surprise to see how many you end up with and you'll every year in every container you'll kind of figure out what it is that you can do to maximize for each species the the yield of babies but the main thing is you're starting with such a low number of fish ideally that's that's the usual standard is you start with a pair or maybe no more than five generally of a specific species of fish and then by the end of the season you end up with all these fish so here's one of these red and the, the sun's not super bright right now but here's one of these red cheeked uh top minnows and uh they're they're really pretty orange tail red face yellow body kind of green um but in any case, they're a native species to Florida and the south, and they swim in and out of salt water and then into fresh water. And so over here, you can see the Mayuki, the blue rice fish. Let's try to grab one and examine one. They're quick, but my whole point is being, so know your fish, do some research, and find out what the species can tolerate, because it really does vary. So... So rice fish can tolerate all the way to freezing and all the way to 105 degrees for short periods of time. You don't want them to be in that, that you know, at 100 degrees for days on end, but for a day or two or for part of the day, they will survive that. They are incredible little survivors. Color's always terrible on a live stream, but these guys are sparkling blue and silver. They're a fun one. So, boop, back you go. But, um, yeah, so over here, these ones are even easier yet to see. And my little creamsicle guy, actually, he's too creamsicle-y. We need to get him out now that he's old enough. He can go back 
over here in with these guys with more of the orange and creamsicle and then we have a full orange but let's get back to tub sorry i got off on a tangent so you're putting such few amount of fish in that you don't really need to worry about cycling your tank uh per se you can literally just put in substrate if you want that's however you want i mean you can you can prep it and layer it like lasagna and make a full-on aquarium type container or you can just say you know what we're just gonna kind of wing it and see what happens um in this one here we've got gravel and we've got lava rock we've got uh white cloud minnows in here that are uh, the the yellow uh or albino kind and then we've got the white madakas or platinum madakas. So that's this orange guy here is not actually an orange fish. It's a, a white cloud right here that you're seeing. A Vietnamese meteor minnow or Vietnamese white cloud, whatever you want to call it. And there are neocaridina shrimp in here and they're doing totally fine. Um, so when you take these tubs, you just fill them up with water. You can dechlorinate it or you can just let it sit for a day or two and then the water will be completely ready for the fish. So you're putting such few fish in, in most cases. I mean, some people may tub a different way, but the, the generally uh, agreed upon method, whether you're using, these are 12, well, they're tw about 12 or 13 gallons now. They're 14 gallon barrels if they were completely full to the very brim so i'm guessing they're about 12 and a half gallons maybe there's another gallon missing of substrate so i'm just going to round it to about 10 gallons um i do like giving them enough depth that if raccoons or neighborhood cats or anything like that come in that their scoop is about at the shoulder joint of a house cat and that really does help a lot with predation however there's also uh, a few issues that we'll mention which is if you have steep walls on your container like this one then the yes a cat or something could fall in but more likely than a predator falling in is a baby bird especially in the midwest and the south uh southeast that is baby birds will come in and think it's a shallow bird bath or puddle and then they'll freak out and they can get stuck. So it's actually a pretty good idea to have um, a rock for them to stand on right under the surface or a stick for them to get out or, or something uh, just in case. So that's just one of those, you know, being nice to nature kind of things um, that, that uh, I had a subscriber remind me of to mention, which I think was a good point. So, but the, the real thing when you're working on a tub is figure out what plants you can keep and that's part of the fun of this that's part of the fun of the aquascape thing we're doing on this channel is we're trying to figure out what what plants do okay i mean a lot of these plants i put a tiger lily in here and i know for a fact that tiger lilies can do great in our climate in the summer however the one that was in my fish room did terribly it came in here it got shocked and it died like within a week and a half so you want to make sure not to shock the plants plants e even more so than fish sometimes need to be slowly transferred if they're some sort of tropical plant like a sword plant there's a good chance you can get a sword plant to grow um here in the northwest today it's 74 degrees and the humidity is about 60 percent or so so it's actually a fairly warm ish day for us and the humidity is fairly high but usually I mean June for us could be as low as 45 degrees at night and it could be as high as 90 degrees and so we don't really know and I would say that uh, that that really it is one of the our, where i live right now is one of the kind of most volatile summer habitats that you could have there's other places that are less hospitable in that yes if you live in arizona or south you know or in san diego or texas your your area is going to be a lot hotter 
and heat will kill your fish before cold in most species but the thing with that is you have control of that you knew that you know that and um so you basically what you want to do is limit the exposure of sunlight in the day in the northwest in the northeast uh in the great lakes area san francisco in the mountains um generally you want to give it six hours of sunlight a day and it's best to either have that towards the morning or towards the evening if you can where i'm at here the sun comes up over here and uh, then by this time of day it's uh, up here and then sets uh, so following my finger it's like boop, and the tubs are right here so by the by around two or three o'clock they get light all the way until 7 or 8 p.m and um, that will give them light during the warm part of the day for me but it won't cook the tub all morning all midday and so for me that keeps the water about what the high of the day is if six hours ish um now we get a lot of overcast days here too and so the fact that they're in the shade kind of means that they're going to be whatever the high of the day is also you can if you live in a very hot place though there's two major ways you can totally um you know hack the system and and get your tubbing your tanks to work well in the 90 to 100 degree heat if you live in death valley you may need to get some sort of chiller or something you know but i know people in for instance amarillo or el paso that are very successful with and lots in san diego that are very successful with uh tubbing and the main thing is with those hot temperatures your oxygen saturation is going to plummet on the tanks so or on your any water and so what you want to do is you want to add aeration now a lot of people do fountains a fountain is basically water agitation so it brings uh agitating the surface of the water is what truly brings oxygen into the water column bubble wands air stones things like that they don't diffuse as they're rising up through the water column more than about five percent or ten percent so it's when they break the surface tension of the water that they're able to then diffuse and uh, disseminate through the water column same with co2 that's why when you buy the little stones that descend that, that break it up into a million little bubbles it's so that when it hits the top it's a fizzy little um you know little things are jumping all over the little bubbles and splashes at a micro level it's like lots of little cannonballs going off like someone jumping into a pool doing a cannonball and that will oxygenate your your hot water likewise in the winter you need something similar to that if your water freezes really hard because you need to take care of keeping it moving so it doesn't freeze as easy if it's getting down to like negative 20 fahrenheit or negative uh well, negative four or five celsius something like or uh wait no negative like 10 celsius or negative 20 celsius you know then you're in a place where it's it's just don't put your fish outside guys you know if, if it gets much colder than around zero celsius or 30 well 25 degrees fahrenheit just don't mess with with winter unless you really know what you're doing and you've looked into it uh and have native fish or something but i can say that my madaka i have a whole video on how fish survive under the ice and some can survive essentially frozen and that that doesn't mean that they are rock solid frozen but they are enshrouded in water that is colder than the freezing point and they have a natural antifreeze but that's not the issue in summer and so the next big question people always have is when are when is it the right time to, to put the fish out and it totally depends on the fish and i know that's not the answer that everyone wants to hear um if you have days where everything's going to be 75 degrees 80 degrees and the night's going to be 50 to 60 degrees as the low then sure you can put out just about any fish you have um the other thing you can do if you're in a real hot climate or a cold climate but i mean really more so for hot 
is insulate your your uh, your tubs and and tanks. So if you have a tub like this, you've got more insulation than something thin, obviously. And the bigger volume you have, the more insulated it is. The bigger surface area you have, the less you have to worry about um, oxygenation. So if you have a very shallow tank that's very big, uh, surface area wise, you, you, there's less of a chance that you need a pond than if you had, say, this bucket filled. There would be no oxygen probably by this point in the bucket, even on a good day. And what happens is we get heat that, that does actual convection cycles. So even if you have a, a container like this, and it's, say it's 100 degrees that day, the water in the container, let's say it started at 70 degrees, and all of a sudden you got a 100 degree day, and at night it goes down to 50 degrees. So you're in the desert somewhere, and you're going to basically take the average of about 75 degrees right in between the high and the low, and that's probably where most bodies of water are going to settle because it takes an immense amount of energy to heat up water. Now, water can lose heat quicker than it can retain heat in theory, just because the amount of energy it takes to impart it, just the laws of hydro and thermal dynamics. Um, in theory, yes, everything takes the same amount of energy in is out. You can't create it or destroy it but it has to do with conductivity surface area and other things other than just like if we lived in a vacuum so that's just the way it is now if you have an aquarium something like this um, you could choose to bury it in the ground but then that'd be really pointless to have a glass aquarium but for this I wanted to have some fish this season and I'm still trying to catch them that I can put in here with sand and then watch them in a 55 gallon and be able to see them swimming doing their thing but you need to know that this only is good for, say, now, late, mid to late June through maybe September, early October at the latest, because this is going to lose heat very quickly. It's both got a lot of surface area here and it is thin, so the rate it can radiate heat off very quickly. Um, so let's look at another, you know, just normal size container or tub thing that you might use. Uh, and I'm going to get more. So I want to get more totes like this because when you get something at any depth, you're going to get convection currents and that evens out your temperature both all throughout the day, but all through the day and night. But like this right here is, uh, is just a 20 gallon fish tank I've had for years outside. I've had it for four years outside now. And it is so seasoned, it's got a real substrate like you would have in an aquarium where you've got sand and then gravel and then eco soil and then gravel again. Um, and in here you can see uh, our friend who dropped by the clear guppies, which I'll show you guys in a moment, uh, also brought by a few more orange madaka fry to go with the few orange madakas I had. Um, so hopefully we'll get a good line going in here too, but you can see I've got the Azola, uh, growing here, um, which a really cool thing about Azola is, or, so let me take a step back. Let's talk. Okay, guys. So I recently posted a video in the community section and the video said cooking why are blue foods blue and why is that rare <laughs> well the answer is anthocyanins it's a chemical that happens thank you so much for the super chat tori and also alan i saw the super chat i'll address the contest in a moment but i didn't i i didn't miss you i see you and i appreciate you brother so anthocyanins are a chemical that occurs they're about seven or eight hundred types so it's a range of chemicals, uh, and they occur in fruits and plants and in trees and things like that. Um, also, oh, hey, Rico, thank you so much for the $5 Super Chat. I appreciate it. You know what? I think what I might need to do with the Super Chat money coming in soon is get a better mic and actually get an underwater camera, like a GoPro, um, for my tanks. So that's kind of my next little 
monetary goal i think w in is in line but uh let's see here so I'll, I'll get your question in a moment but let me just finish the anthocyanin thing so I, I posted a video about how blueberries what makes blueberries blue so if you watch the video you'll learn all about it it's in the community tab and it's open to everyone it's adam ragosa cooking video but what he talks about is in neutral soil or neutral water anthocyanins are purple and so what we've got going on here is we've got purple azola and when you have low nitrogen and high photosynthetic work going on so that means the sun has been you know bathing on this for quite some time uh if you have alkaline substances your your anthocyanins in your plants the same thing that makes most plants any plant that's blue or berry that's blue has anthocyanins any plant that's purple same deal or magenta or pink so in this corner over here i know that something's going on with fungi bacteria algae whatever it is and there's blue it's hard to see on camera but there's a blue hue like a seafoam green to the azola here to the purple azola and over here where there's wood and up here where it's on the wood it's red rather than a nice like it's a it's a darker burgundy well it turns out that anthocyanins their color completely depends on ph and so literally the color or the the ph of your pond and the amount of nitrates because uh anthocyanins are actually like melanin or mel uh, yeah, they're like melanin. Not exactly, but for the way most people probably understand melanin, in the sense that melanin protects your skin from UV damage, that's what anthocyanins are for, as well as um, they serve other purposes in the plant as well. But they are a pigment that causes the plant to be protected from damage of, from too much sun. And because of that, uh, they build up when the sun is beating down on these plants. And same with aquatic plants. And so you get pink and red plants. So same, we know there's anthocyanins or the other thing that can make plants red is carotene or keratins. Beta carotene is the one you probably heard of in carrots. Orange, red, and yellow colors come from it. But basically those two chemical groups, every color dye that's organic comes from those. And with blue, it's all anthocyanins. And so when we're outside, we have so much power from the sun, from the sun, that we are able to harness that. And if we don't have nitrogen, nitrates, nitrites, ammonia in our ponds, in our, in our tubs, they will use that to protect themselves a lot more than if they have nitrogen. So it's not iron that causes them to be red or anything like that. It's low nitrogen uh, compounds and the anthocyanins and then the pH. So if you want bluer, more turquoise colored plants or more lush green, you're going to want to go with alkaline, just slightly alkaline, anything over 7.5. If you want, uh, and this is true with blueberries, so when you cook blueberries, for instance, on a, in, in a pan, when you cook them, at first they turn dark, dark, like red, like blood, and you mash them up and cook them. And then they go all the way to like a bluish, yellowy green, and then it looks almost black again, and then it kind of settles out somewhere in the reddish to bluish, purplish color deep purple range but what it is is if you take a litmus paper and test it you would find that it's cycling through as you're adding sugar as you're adding most people add baking soda or baking powder to it initially and um like when you're making pie filling or whatever that's what's going on all right let's see here so rico stan let's get to your guys' questions too and i'll stop wandering sorry guys uh, have you ever wonder, wonder, whatever became of me? I'm living on the air in Cincinnati, WKRP. Falling turkeys from the sky. Okay, I thought you had a question that was some in-depth thing, Rico. Thanks a lot for just being in my head with me. Uh, and anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about is now completely lost. Thank you so much, Rico. 
<laughs> uh, let's see. Huh? Let me read. Uh, I don't want to miss any more of your questions. I know I just got on a, a tirade, but I wanted to cover in this video that there's no wrong way to set up the tub. Uh, anything over 10 gallons outside, you really can do no substrate. You can do thick substrate. You can do gravel, sand, whatever, because the bacteria with two to five fish, especially if they're small species and not if we're not talking tilapia or something, if they're in a 10, a 20, a 30, a 100 gallon horse trough or, or cow trough, um, like from a feed store, which are great for this, um, they're not going to they're not going to build up enough nitrogen nitrates and ammonia to be an issue the sun will cause algae to grow before that happens so you're not going to lose them to that, that like you would indoors in a completely sealed off hermetically uh, enclosed aquarium so don't worry about that piece the real piece is the oxygenation some species like rainbow fish and things like that maybe aren't the best thing to start with because they do need oxygenation they de do need water movement but anything like gouramis like honey gouramis or blue dwarf gouramis very peaceful ones um or bettas things like these fish madakas are just you know out of this world uh, tolerant to different things but a lot of those fish are labyrinth fish that i just named and they can breathe air so it doesn't matter even if you've got them living in a mud hole uh, even if you dug a hole in the ground and just filled it with hose water, in theory, and it wasn't chlorinated, they would still survive out in summer. Uh, and the cool thing about tubbing is also, I don't feed any of these things unless I'm trying to fatten up something, or unless there are a bunch of babies born and I don't see any mosquito larvae or whatnot. Seattle isn't known for its bugginess. You know, most of the country has more flying bugs and critters than we do. And yet alone here in Seattle, there's plenty of food with mosquito larvae, um, nymphs, and all sorts of different um, caddisfly larvae. You know, you'll get bloodworms, you'll get roly-poly bugs that randomly end up in there. And you're like, how did you get up over the... What? I don't even know. Um, but also... Let's touch back real quick um, because I do have some cool news as well, which is uh, that the aquascaping contest, you can watch either one of the videos I put up. One's a two hour live stream and one is a um, 15 minute or so um, introduction into what the contest is about, what the prizes are, what the... Uh, hopes and goals are of the the uh, contest and the deadlines. Well, the deadline's coming up for saying you want to participate. You don't need to have your Aquascape built yet even. If you want in, if you want a chance to win $250, uh, two, uh, another $100, a $50 prize, another $100 prize, um, Madaka rice fish that somebody's putting up for a prize, uh, a signed copy, thanks to Crystal Castleman and uh, Alan, um, who's in the chat now. Uh, signed copy of her book, Aquarium Plants. Best aquarium plant ID book in the world, hands down, for sure. And then the new news that we did have, we did have some other signed things. We had a signed Diane Wallstad, um, the, planet, the Ecology of the Planet Tank book, which is a seminal piece of reading if you want to understand the science behind aquariums and planted tanks she from the 1970s to the 1990s dissected it all and confirmed what hobbyists had been hinting at or thought she she sorted out fact from fiction and put the empirical evidence together it's a little dry but it has a lot of great info in it um, and then we also have some uh, ADA uh, contest uh, participants, uh, art, and some other books that Alan has that any aquascaper would love. So we have prizes for basically, you know, five or six spots easily, and they're good prizes. But what the new news is, is that I got a comment, which, boy, I was flattered, um, I was really moved by it was George Farmer who I had messaged because Alan had a copy of George 
George's new book, and we were like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we could get him to sign it for the contest, and then we could give away a signed copy of all three of the big books that we wanted to give away. Well, I couldn't get a hold of him through the people that I thought maybe they could get him a message or something, because they kind of know him or whatever. He's a busy guy, and he's overseas. Out of nowhere, he commented on one of my recent videos and was like, Hey, I love what you're doing. I'm, I just wanted to let you know that I subscribed on uh, the shrimp, one of the shrimp videos I did recently. And so I messaged him and you know what he did? The, the guy, he was very nice, very kind. In the, uh, he, he messaged me on Instagram and he said, uh, You know what? I want to donate a book. And I said, well, I want to give you something. And so we agreed that I would pay the price of the book and the shipping, and I would give that to Project Piaba. So I, I sent that off uh, PayPal to Project Piaba, uh, well, to a fr mutual friend we both happen to know that, that works with them. And then uh, he is sending the book as we speak. Well, actually, like Monday, probably. But <laughs> he's sending the book. Uh, to me in the States and we'll have a signed copy of his new book on aquascaping. So we'll have three really incredible prizes and just a twist of fate. I mean, Crystal Castleman kind of donated the book through Alan when he bought some books. She was like, you know what, just keep it and it's signed and everything, you know, first edition of the new edition, if that makes sense, the first round of printing of this, oh, I'm hiccuping, English version of a German book. She speaks German uh, first, first language. But um, really cool that we've got that now. And yes, I've tried CPDs in tubs many times. They work great. Danio's, incredible um, in tubs. Uh, you know, guppies generally, real good in tubs. Uh, some of the fancier guppies are getting hard to keep in tubs. I haven't had good luck in early season with them and i'm talking anything going on now no matter where you are in the contiguous united states i think i can say maybe there might be spots in like maybe montana or something or colorado where you're up in the mountains at like ten thousand feet and it's not true what i'm saying but pretty much everywhere now you can consider it tubbing season and at least put out your middle water critters and your cold water critters. The tropical end of tubbing gets more um, nuanced and we'll go into that, but that can actually be saved for a whole video of like, you wanna do angelfish outside. Well, in Washington, you got about a month when you can do that, maybe. Uh, or you gotta start incorporating heaters and things, which isn't that hard to do either, but the fact that your fish are outside getting sunshine, UV light, that they're eating live insects, and the fact that they go through the hot and cold stress cycle, which stress can be eustress or stress. And eustress is like, you know, I'm stressed because I'm biking up a hill, but I win a million dollars when I get to the top. I'm stressed because I got to win. That's a good stress. It's a eustress. Whereas stress stress is a cortisol stress uh you know oh man i owe money and i'm in pain there's nothing productive coming from it and that's not good for your fish you know when they're being chased around by each other and they're getting this bad cortisol raising stress it's generally not a good thing unless you're doing some real specific behavioral stuff but you stress like the cold at night that just a little bit of stress, plants and animals, they have evolved to deal with this. I mean, we have to do something at night when it's cold for millennia. They didn't have heaters in rivers, you know, uh, for these fish before humans were around. So it's, it's things like that that give you a hardier fish, a much more beautiful fish because they just color up with, like I said, the anthocyanins the keratins, the as ascatascan, ascati can never say it right, ascatasins. Uh, Stephanie Cooper, thank you so much for a joining in membership. It's reliable uh, income for the channel, and it helps me do what I love to do, which is 
talk to you uh, all. So thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> Rico still causing problems. Red cabbage juice works as a pH indicator. Correct. And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, Maple Street. Hey, Alex, we just put some uh, Zantoka Doa Dry Eye. Okay, I don't know how to say that. It's probably Wa when toca is it i don't know it's it's gonna be latino like spanish with the z there uh goody okay so we put some goody heads uh out today first time trying them they're cares fish so they're for those of you who don't know what cares is it's a program for um at risk or um endangered or extinct in the wild it depends but um threatened fish species and i think that's really awesome uh maple street right on i i'll try to check in with your channel and see how that's going um noah how does this change with salt water so honestly salt water i don't know um i've kept salt water as a kid literally like i'd go to the beach and fill up like you know water jugs like gallon jugs like three or four of them and i'd bring them back and i'd fill like a five gallon and I'd put rocks in there and have crabs and sea anemones and seaweed and a few random like sculpin in there. But it needs to stay very cold for most of the U.S. If you live in Florida or the Gulf Coast, then yes, you might be able to do something with that. Um, but in the U.S., for most coastal U.S., if you're north of San Luis Obispo uh, or even really L.A., and if you're north of... Virginia uh, or in the Great Lakes or anything like that I mean you're you're not gonna have good luck with the salt water spectrum the salt water tropical tends to be a lot more consistent day through night than lakes are and um, honestly the nuances there I just am not the right person to give that information uh, and uh, I'll try to find out who is though. See if anybody I know has done some saltwater tubbing, like you know, clownfish or some small saltwater fish that you could do in a in a small area. Um, I'll take a look. Uh, Alan, too many spiders in Washington for there to be a lot of flying bugs. Yeah, unfortunately, so many freaking things. Uh, Relic turtle, please participate. Um, I appreciate it. Yes, average fish keeper is the Madaka guy. Um, I, I didn't want to like dox you. Um, let's see here. So, do 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 do. Oh, uh, LRB threatened to enter last night at Aquashella, and you. I told him to enter. You know what? Lucas made a really incredible aquascape in 2017. Him and a team with, I think Ted Judy was on his team and. Um, who else was on his team? I'm sorry, guys, if I'm wandering. If I'm making y'all seasick, let me know. The gimbal is kind of keeping things a little less hurdy-gurdy. But um, I'm just, like, kind of in a mood where, like, uh, I was just in a car because I was fishing all day um, earlier. And uh, we just were in traffic and in a car. So we got back from the countryside, and then we were in traffic. And my sciatica is killing me, so I'm kind of just pacing, uh, honestly. 3G, thank you so much for the $10 uh, for camera and mic fund. I appreciate it. I do have a little mic, but I want to get one of the standalone kinds so I can mount a green screen. And, like, Bob Steamfaw has actually used video before. Um of like my tank or whoever's tanks he gets you know permission and then puts the tank on behind him while he does his live stream and i've always loved when he does that that's something i'd like to incorporate i'd love to have a gopro or two in some of my aquariums or looking at my aquariums and then we could switch to them and i could be sitting in one spot rather than wandering like a freaking madman like i usually do um so thank you. I appreciate that. Allison, uh, okay. So if you guys have a question for me, please do the at symbol and then the secret history living in your aquarium like Psychedelic Hippocampus just did. What a star. Where can we post a playlist for our tanks? I wouldn't want on the entry form. It wouldn't work on the entry form. Oh, um, a playlist. Oh, of videos? Well, you could do a link to the playlist in the entry form in the description. That would probably be easiest for us to manage. But um, 
if you have a YouTube uh, channel or something that you've uploaded to, and you have some short videos, because the thing is, we've got 47 entries, 48 entries now, I believe, and I know there's going to be some of you who are like, the next day that it's closed, we've only got three days left to enter, so basically Tuesday is going to be the cutoff, and um, I might be like, gracious by a day this year but like we've had three weeks of knowing actually like months of knowing but three weeks of guessing it i mean for sure knowing the day that it was coming um so i'll probably just have to say no to some people for the first time even though i hate doing that but um yeah so but please join in and if if something doesn't load or there's an issue that's not your fault just let us know leave a comment those of you who leave me comments after videos not in a live stream know that i get to most of my comments if you leave a comment on a video or live stream of mine there's a 99 percent chance that i'm going to find it unless it's an old video and it's a long thread being responded to then i i don't get alerted and i have to manually look and there's no way i can do that with 700 videos but if you just leave a comment on any recent video we're golden and i can find that and figure it out and you can just tell me like, hey, Alex, I can't get a photo to upload or hey, um, my camera's broke, whatever, whatever your excuse is. No, what, whatever's going on, hopefully we can sort out. Um, <coughs> Kevin says, I just put 20 embers and 15 Cardinal Tetris 75 in a black in a 75 gallon black water tank today. Nice. That'll be really pretty. Um, heat and aquatics, heat and aquatics. Hey Alex, just somewhat finished up uh, setting up a temporary fish house whilst I listen or I look for a new house. I'll send some pics over tomorrow. Uh, big up from Cheshire, England. Right on. Uh, cheers. That is rad. And I am <coughs> happy for you. And I also like that uh, you were listening to uh, my videos. I, I tried to put a playlist together for you all um, that, that's of of um predominantly audio like today we haven't looked at a ton of stuff we haven't been peeking in my tanks i haven't been doing any demonstrations um and so i've been trying to put the the content that i have when i'm making it into the new it says podcast and it's like podcast friendly content i've been trying to put it into there so that that way we can um have something so that, because I, I like being able to listen to stuff too and not always watch. Um, and so I'm trying to put it in there if, if you're driving or if you're at work or whatever. Uh, and I'm trying to make more of like the history videos and things like that uh, and species spotlights and stuff. I'll, I'll add some to of that stuff in there if it's not, say, say less than 25% is requires like, hey guys, take a look at this. Because you can get the idea, you know, I'll say, oh, it's a red fish with a blue stripe, and I may be showing that, but you still might want to listen about, you know, okay, well, it takes this tolerant, or these water parameters, and gets this big, okay, I don't need that, or I do want that, or I want to look into it more, or whatever. Um, you'll get the idea from there, so we'll see. Um, Northwest Fish Keeping, I live in Federal Way, so sort of close to Seattle, the temps here uh our highs 40s low 50s at night um and anywhere from the 70s in the day uh any out of the ordinary picks i can keep outside i mean you're in the same you're in the same weather zone as me really i think you are technically like right down there in that weird little valley um that industrial if you're in the valley down there in kent auburn in between the two kind of hills technically you're in 8a rather than 8b because you're a little more protected. Um, and uh, you are going to be able to keep the same things as I am. Uh, that's planting zone. That, that's what I'm talking about when I say those numbers. Um, but what's cool is you can look at some plants like uh, lilies for nurse, from nurseries. And it'll tell you like when to plant them and where and like what time to plant them versus when to take them out when they go to seed when they bloom how many weeks total they do that <laughs> and a lot of that can kind of help you judge because it'll tell you you know oh they need 70 degree weather or they can't have a freeze or it needs to hit 40 
uh, degrees or whatever it may be their trigger if you look into it a little bit knowing your zone can then really help you figure out by inference and deduction also I guess uh, your what you could have nearby um, it says you already have uh, least killies there good one uh, white clouds I mean I would highly recommend any darters any shiners um, there's daces also D A C E uh, that's another native fish that does really well um, pygmy sunfish are a really cool one uh, that I mean in those tubs I could have if I put if I filled it with moss I could have hundreds in there and not even, I mean, not even find them still. They're a tricky ones. So that's another thing to consider before you toss fish into a, a tub outside is can you get them back? You know, if it's full of algae and full of plants and sticks and rocks at the bottom where they can hide and stuff like that, maybe you don't want to put like a clear little fish in there that's just going to, you know, get get gone quick um but that being said bright colored fish are a lot more of an issue for birds of prey so where i've got my tubs right now birds flying over aren't gonna see as easily the the fish if they were completely out in the open on the patio or in a pond that's when you the floating plants are really key to tubbing because uh but be it lily pads be it even just duckweed or even algae that really hides that hides the fish a bright orange fish you know koi um madakas things like that they can be just like beacons like little lighthouses for here we get great blue herons we get gray herons we get um osprey we get um bald eagles very frequently uh red tail hawks are extremely common here um because i live Freeways like, I don't know, five blocks away. So we've got red tail hawks doing their loop that I can see constantly. Uh, but none of them have come down so far. Even crows can eat things. Rats will eat fish um, in the urban areas. They don't tend to do that in suburban or um, rural areas from what I've seen. But they will do it in, if you live in the heart of a city, rats will eat your fish. Uh, live fish, they will try. Um, so those are just things predatory, predatory wise to consider. Some people just put a lid on it. Um, other people use fine mesh. Some people just build walls, like I mentioned, like taller containers. For me, I try not to sweat it. I try to give them deep enough water that the fish can dive down. And yes, if a predator is hanging out, if a neighborhood cat is hanging out and really wants to get one, sometimes they'll get one, but hopefully the rest scatter and go down and that can only happen so many times and you can identify that you have a problem before that happens what would be a good species tubbing if you need to pull them in late september you're in calgary so calgary i know can get fairly hot you guys do have um intense summers and intense winters with the great plains kind of thing going on um so i would say i mean Man, that's that's a little tougher, but I think for the summer, um, you know, I would I would uh, if I were you, I would say depending on how cold it's getting at night, as long as it's not getting below about three or four Celsius, you can keep things like like I'm talking about normal normal fish, but if you're getting near that zero to three celsius range um at night you're either going to need to bury your tubs so they're insulated and so that the sunshine in the day warms them up and then at night they never cool off um to that halfway between the two high and low number um and then you can also wrap them in insulation like insulation foam or caulking insulation you can take um cardboard and and get a cardboard uh frame basically that you make Put it around your tub or a box or an aquarium and then buy the cheap expanding caulking foam for insulation or for electrical and duct work um, and you can just spray that in there that will actually keep your tanks pretty warm i know people who've used a 200 watt heater on a 20 gallon tank and left it out all year to keep you know guppies and endlers and live bears mollies platies um things like that uh so 
short of that, because I don't know your exact temperature there and everything, I mean, if if you're over, if you're in the 45, 50 degree Fahrenheit range and above, like as long as it's not dipping down into the like 40 degrees at night, um, you're probably gonna be okay. Even if it does dip down that low, that's probably okay a few nights, but you just don't want that over and over. And you, I know because Calgary, just like Seattle, people don't realize Seattle and Washington state, Olympia is the capital. And we have a farther North capital than Maine, than the state of Maine. And our capital's like in the middle of our state. So, I mean, really we have like where I live in Seattle is almost two hours North of the capital, Olympia. Uh, and so for where I live, we get 18 hour long days right now, almost when, uh, when it's, uh, solstice, which is coming up here on the what 21st or 22nd, whatever it is of June. So I know in Calgary, you guys have some long nights too. So the cold weather doesn't really, you know, it doesn't even start cooling down majorly until the sun's been down at least an hour and then it starts cooling down, cooling down. But really, I mean it starts rising again within five, six hours uh, this time of year for us living in the northern uh, latitudes. So um, I would say species-wise, uh, you could try a lot of different things, but I mean, try maybe like a honey gourami. Paradise fish are an excellent one. They're one that people overlook a lot. Um, CPDs, uh, 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 gold ring or tin winnie danios uh obviously white cloud like oh you can't keep those in most parts of canada but white cloud or meteor minnows are a great one um guppies are a good one get a hearty strain of guppies even just like assorted guppies rather than a fancy like veil tail delta something or other you know whatever um uh do i have a dog i do not have a dog right now i wish i did um oh what's up jardin uh <laughs> jadrin <laughs> sorry i always say jardin i've got a friend named josephine jardin and jardine and i always say that um i hope the that aqua shell is going well i wish i was there i mean i could have been i could have been there i could have been a contender um, but I just decided I'd rather go in, in, um, when it's not so hot and I'd rather go in, uh, hopefully I'll go in October to Florida and be able to catch some, uh, you know, do some wild collecting. That's the goal. Um, salt water is allowed in the contest, Relic Turtle. Uh, it limits your plants and immersed plants are a requirement um so i mean you got mangroves and some things like that that you could do um but if you're wanting to sign up for the competition go to my channel you know the one you're on now and just look up the video that says 2021 aquascaping uh competition and in the first in the description in the first sentence there there's a link with it that will take you to your entry form there you can enter an idea you can enter you don't have to but we'd like it at some point at least year before or when you started the project and then in the final form you can submit um more of like what you ended up creating halfway if you want or if you want to document oh i cut this this way and i used this rather than actual wood or stone like i used fiberglass or i used whatever i put a pump in under this thing uh whatever it may be or you made a sump um then all that kind of stuff we like we'd love to see it uh and you can then explain all of that and and basically what we need now or in the next few days is we need you saying yes i want to participate this is the size container i'm using whatever it may be and i want to put these fish and these plants in and my inspiration is you can say whatever i mean it can be the orinoco delta it could be that you saw a picture of an, a biotope you like it can be that you saw a species you like and you want to kind of go with stuff that works with them in a biotope it could be that you want 
one of every fish from every continent in there and you're doing a bigger size tank. I mean, I don't know what it could be. It could be all blue fish. It could be all red fish. But <coughs> uh, watch those videos and, and they'll outline what you should do. Don't be scared to enter. It is, it is, there is no risk for entering. Um, I, you know, in theory, I'm not going to... It, it, I'll talk to you uh, if somebody wants like if they're a finalist and they want their piece picked apart like critically then they can let me know personally and, and we could do that as judges Mrigel, Allen and I other than that we're going to give constructive criticism or feedback we're not going to this isn't to put anyone down everyone's at different stages this is about an accessible aquascaping contest so that you can enter so that you don't have to feel like, oh man, I'm not good enough. I, I'm not, I'm not ADA material, you know, or I don't have $10,000 for rimless tank and a stainless steel canister and CO2. I mean, you can use local plants. You can use um, 40 bucks worth of stuff. And somebody wanted to put money up for uh, cheapest Aquascape. Now, I still want it to look good, but somebody wants to give an award out at their discretion for the least money used for their favorite aquascape or whatever. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We still got to work kinks out. Hold on, guys. Let me. It's going to get dark for a moment. I'm going to bug my wife for a moment. She's going to say, Alex, you're in here talking while I'm watching my stories. But. Has anybody talked to uh, Dr. Pepper and found out if they're going to give me any sort of sponsorship or free Dr. Pepper for life? Anyone? Because we were working on that, guys, and uh, I'm not going to point any fingers, but I haven't gotten a free lifetime supply of Dr. Pepper yet. So I'm just going to say, I thought I had fans who cared about me. You know, I just... Uh, Really, it's just not fair, and um, you guys let me down. I just, it's a bummer. <sighs> I trusted you. Um, but that's okay. We have tomorrow. We'll, we'll try to get that Dr. Pepper endorsement tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Monster Fish Gal. Lori, you rock. Alex, off topic, does it help if you don't skip the ad before your video? Actually, it does. Um, yeah, if you watch those ads... I try to put them just before videos and I don't know what determines why YouTube will sometimes have like a five minute one that you have to watch 30 seconds or a minute of and then other times it's like five seconds and you can skip it. I don't know. They have skippable and non-skippable options, but it decides when those play and for who and why and God only knows. So um, I have it set right now, hopefully so that there's no ads during the videos. Some of my older videos and some of my videos that have been uploaded places that are not off my home computer, um, the YouTube default settings are to put incremental ads now. Anything over eight minutes, it wants to put an ad every four and a half minutes, which is ridiculous um, in my opinion. And I don't plan on putting ads in unless maybe, I kind of decided that for now my take on that is um, you guys are so supportive. You guys are member. You guys are doing the membership thing. I mean, the dollar ninety nine membership. We have a bunch of people now, like over a hundred, that are members. And that, that I mean, with twenty coming up on twenty five thousand subscribers. I mean, can you imagine if even ten percent of those people all put in a buck ninety nine a month after YouTube gets their cut and taxes and everything? That would be like a buck twenty five per person out of ten. I mean, that would be like $2,500 or more a month. I mean, that would, that, would, that would be enough to support me if that, you know, if that happens. So in theory, um, I don't want to do the ads if I don't have to because people are, you guys are generous. You guys are helping and um, I just like to keep it that way. But yeah, it, technically, if you watch the ads, it does help help but i mean do what you will i know a lot of people have ad blocker and i don't uh 
I don't at all begrudge anybody for that. All right, let me scroll down because actually, you know, I was out fishing all morning and uh, I thought my phone had charged enough in the truck on the way back, but apparently, no, 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 it didn't. Uh, and I'm down to 10%. Is that what we're at? Yeah, 10%. So I've probably got another five or 10 minutes we can chat. So let's, 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 uh, let's wrap up what else, um, what else is going on? Oh, Noah Trim, thank you so much. $2 Dr. Pepper Fund. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. W. Merriam, will you review top submissions on the channel again, like for last contest? Yeah, totally. No, that's the whole point. So we're definitely going to, um, we're definitely going to do like probably three episodes since there's so many of y'all. We're going to take um, anybody, unless they were like, please don't share, please don't share. In theory, we also wrote, like, if you enter, we have the right to share the 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 image that you submit um but we're understanding people you know unless they're like the winner then we kind of have to say guys proof's in the pudding look at this winner's picture um but yeah if if you just want to put in your attempt and you really don't think it's going to place but you you want to make an effort um or you want feedback i mean that's kind of what we're going through as we grade it and we have got a section for notes for ourselves and we'll we'll each grade it alone and then we're going to go back through and just kind of discuss each one again with the three of us judges so hopefully people can learn a little bit if somebody did something that was a cardinal sin you know of some sort that uh you know not there isn't much you could do in that in that sense you know but if there's something you could do to really improve it that's just simple then hopefully we can, you know, let you know if you want to know. But if, if you don't want that feedback, if you're just doing it for fun and you want to keep it fun and it's not fun when people give you any sort of um, creative or constructive criticism, I get it. So um, just, you know, let us know in, in the secondary entry form. Like, um, I'd rather not, you know, uh, have it critiqued. Just say something like that. Other than your scores, you know, I mean, we're still going to do that because we got to find the winner. Um, but we won't do it publicly. We're, that's not what this is about. Um, it's me, Alex. Thanks. Don't have money, but I do have time. Happy to let ads play to support your great content. Well, thank you very much. It's me. I appreciate that. You are awesome. Y'all are awesome. I really do appreciate it. Could somebody post the link for the Aquascape contest? Uh, Melissa, yes. Uh, Monster Fish Gal just did because Monster Fish Gal rocks and uh, i really appreciate that Lori. thank you and by the way check out her channel she's got some crazy epic fish that you'll never see in my house because they don't fit they wouldn't fit in my whole house um but she's got some cool ones so uh i would recommend checking it out um <laughs> what is the cardinal sin of aquascaping a disco ball i think the cardinal sin of aquascaping for me would be like um Glowfish? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I could, I'd be, I, I've, I've seen plenty of glowfish in aquascaping, actually. Um, no, I, to me, uh, it would be something more along the lines of um, the fish are not happy and healthy, the plants aren't going to grow right, and it's all about vanity. It's all about looking like plastic plants or plastic rocks and then it's like leaching and killing f i don't know <laughs> like i guess that's a weird question that i all of a sudden trying to unpack spur of the moment and i'm just gonna sound crazy um but yeah um yeah dead fish and plants yeah that would be pretty bad like if you just showed like a, a glass box full of dead rotten plants and fish probably get a zero on that one um <laughs> So, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. Did I cover the basics of of tubbing for you guys? You know, I can make a video too, but um, you know that stands alone that has an outline where I shut up and try to stick to the story. Um, wood is dead plants. That is correct, and um, it's failing. You fail all aquascaping if you have any wood. Um. I got a five-year-old. There is a pink gravel and glow fish tank. Well, that's fine. How many different glass fish are there? There are a lot. So there's not just... Oh, and 
before I forget, they're still outside because it's like the perfect temperature for them. They're literally going in water the same temperature that it is outside right now. Um, but check these bad boys out. Look at these. They're clear fishies. They're clear guppies. Look at that. You can see all the eggs in her waiting to become, waiting to be baby guppies. And in him, he's got this clear... Look at that. Isn't that cool? So, thank you again for dropping these off, buddy. Um, beautiful. I was not expecting quite the... Um, the uh, what do you call it uh, I guess color like there's this really beautiful color that they're like glowing from the inside out um, and look at those eggs in her she's just I mean you can tell she's a live bear and the male just nice structures to the fins and so different than albino or leucistic but yeah, so that's a glass gene or a see-through gene. And so in the video that I want to talk about, there are actual glass catfish, you know. It's just, that's, that's a common name given to any fish that has clear bodies. But um, really, it, it's, it's, a, it's a genetic trait that happens in the tissue. And, and it has to do with how the, as they'd say in the UK, the capillaries... Or capillaries, capillaries are rerouted, and uh, you don't see the blood flowing through them uh, in red form, uh, and the organs and everything are compressed and set aside generally. Uh, um, let's see here, uh, Thingamatorium. I like that name. Went outside, feed my ponds, and came back to the disco ball scape. <laughs> doing Saturday, digging Saturday Night Fever right now. Okay, all right, fine. I cannot begin to do BG's voice. Uh, just can't. Voice is too gravelly. Uh, but I gotta call it. Uh, I gotta call it. I gotta. We gotta cut. We gotta cut. We'll do it live. Uh, I just did it live. Um, but if you guys have any questions. Drop them like they're hot in the comments. And uh, we'll try to do another stream soon. Uh, I might even do another live stream tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. Might be feeling squirrely. Um, lately, uh, the algorithmic gods have kind of blessed me. Um, since I did this shrimp video, uh, the one that George Farmer happened to see, uh, I don't know why, but it's gotten, I don't know, 15,000 or something views. Um, between here and then also on Facebook, it's been passed around too. So, um, because of that, when that happens, you know, I'm always grinding and working on this channel, but I really like to kind of keep the momentum going if I can. Uh, so we'll see. I might, might, instead of releasing another, um, you know, 10 minute or 15 minute, 20 minute video tomorrow, um, I may just do another stream and try to stick more with actual Q and A's and sit still and shut up about my own mind like on a hamster wheel you know the problem is my mind's on a hamster wheel running all the time but then the hamster leaves the wheel and you guys are stuck looking at the wheel with nothing in it and my hamster and i are having all this fun out in neverland so i gotta get a i gotta get a gopro for the hamster in my brain so that we can all follow it well on that crazy note that alex just said um <laughs> i gotta call it quits because the phone's going to do that if I don't. But thank you so much, guys. You rock. Thank you so much, uh, mods, super chatters, lurkers, new members to the channel, all of that stuff. Uh, you know, spread the uh, spread the, the, the magical fairy dust of uh, aquascaping contest info around town. If you, if you got a guy, tell a guy. If you got a gal, tell a gal. If you got a fish, tell the fish. Um, fish are allowed to enter. I think we're, we're going to attempt a kid's section, like under 18 section. Um, but yet again, don't know how that's going to work. So if you do enter something for your kid, just let me know. This was for my kid. I've got three people that have asked. So we'll see. I mean, that probably means there will be two by the end of the contest that are actually entered. Um, just knowing the way life goes, but we'll see. Um, I would love if kids 
wanted to participate. There's legal things where I cannot like do that without the parents entering for them and technically the parents are doing it. But I would love it if your kids want to do it and you just drop a note of how old your kid is and you want to facilitate them trying this out because this is all about growing, learning, trying new things. It's okay to fail. It's okay to accidentally kill some fish or some plants. I mean, you don't want to, but but we're here to grow. We're here to learn from each other, share those mistakes. You know, I'm trying as a channel too, whenever something dies and I see what went wrong, I know what went wrong and it's constructive to show it rather than just depressing. I'm trying to share that with you guys. So, um, you know, it's just kind of my pledge of what, what I want to be doing on here. And uh, I think we all grow when we do that. So, all right, guys, thank you again. Take care of your critters. Give them some love. Take care of your plants. Love them some git. And uh, I'll talk to you guys uh, soon, I'm sure. And uh, I hope you have a great night. May see, 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 blah, 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 blah. may see some people in chat and so forth. Because uh, I'm just sad that I'm not at Aquashella. Um, all right. And thank you again, Average Fish Keeper, for all the cool little fishies. They're really, I'm really excited about the clear guppies. Uh, go. All right, guys, have a great one. <laughs> super cheaters, super chatters. <laughs> That's funny, autocorrect. All right, guys, have a good one, and uh, take care. And mods, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.